All right? Ah, pain to injuries before we start. Okay. 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 Maybe we'll do some therapy on like extra stretch um, so that um, you can get some benefit out of some of the things that we do. And then if something works nicely for you, apply that for the next couple of days and maybe it'll help you unkink something. Okay. All right. All right. Good day, everyone. This is Stephen Chang coming to you live from 333 Grand in downtown Jersey City, New Jersey. Please visit my website, simhayoga.com, for the hybrid schedule, which is in person here at 333 Grand, as well as through Zoom. You can register for class through ubindi.com, and if you're watching this on YouTube, classes are $10, and you can pay through Remo, PayPal, payment information on the bottom of the video, as well as my website, simhayoga.com. Today's class is open flow. It is level one, level two. If you're working with any kind of special conditions or limitations, make sure that you do modify or skip poses altogether, making good decisions about your movement practice so that you don't create any injuries or perpetuate any injuries. Now, if your hips are tight or your lower back is tight, please elevate and sit up on some blocks or some blankets. All right, palms face up. Fingers come together on the mudra, thumb and index fingers touching. Grounding evenly through your seat, elongate through your spine, and start to let your inhales even out with the exhales. Three arms together, inhales. Ah. The eyes closed, hands together in prayer on front of the heart, pressing your thumbs into your heart, heart back into your thumbs, lifting the heart up toward the sky, setting your intention for yoga practice, devoting your practice to someone or something or to yourself, your supreme self that lives within your heart, chanting the mantra for purification, purifying the space in which you practice yoga, call and response. Om Pavitraha. Om ma pavitraha, pavitrawa, pavitrawa, sarwa vushtan, sarwa vushtan, gato piwa, gato piwa, yaha smarit, yaha smarit, bundrikaksham, bundrikaksham, sapahya, sapahya, pihyendraha, pihyendraha, Suchihi, suchihi. Beginning to open the eyes, palms face up. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, right ear to the right shoulder. Now take the left hand and gently push the side of the neck upwards toward the ears. So you're finding more lengthiness through the muscles of the left side of the neck. Release the action of the pushing and then gently turn the chin toward the right shoulder. And then you can release your left hand if you want. And come back to center, lifting back up. Left ear to the left shoulder, right thumb along the muscle along uh, the side of the neck, pushing upwards toward the occipital ridge, which is the ridge of the skull. So you're lengthening the side of the neck and the muscles along the back of the neck. And then release that action. You can release your right hand to the knee and then chin toward the left shoulder, nice and easy. Release back to center with your thumbs to the occipital ridge, push upwards and lengthen the sides of the neck. Release that action, gently point the chin toward the chest, and then with your fingers, a little bit of pressure to the back of the head. Mm -hmm. 
release, lift the chest, and again, with your thumbs, the occipital, uh, occipital ridge, pull up, and then lean the head back slightly, gently looking up. Come back to center, release. All those things okay? Okay, good. Inhale, arms up high. Exhale, twist to the right, right hand behind you, left hand to right knee. Now keep your twist, look forward. And then with your chin toward the left shoulder. So it all depends on your range, if you can touch your chin toward the shoulder, if that's a little bit too much, just a little bit of energy, a pointed chin toward the left shoulder. And that should give you a nice stretch to the back of the neck on the right side a little bit. All right, lift the chin, come back to neutral, inhale, arms up. Exhale, twist your left, left hand behind you, right hand to your left knee. So first initiate your twist of the spine, then turn the chin to look forward, and then gently, energetically maybe, the chin toward the right shoulder. If you have the range and can easily touch your chin toward the right shoulder, even better. And inhale, release, come back to center, arms up. Exhale, side bend, right hand to your floor, left arm overhead. And then left hand reaching towards the upper right hand corner of the room. And then start to lower the chin towards the right knee if you can, or the nose in towards the right knee. So again, stretching the back of the neck. Let's do the nose in towards the knees a little bit easier. And release, come back to side stretch and all the way back up. And then other side, left hand to the floor, right arm overhead. So starting with the right side stretch. And then with your right hand, reach toward the left hand corner of the room. And as you extend, start to lower the nose in toward the left knee. Again, you don't have to touch. It's energetic. It's just a little bit more extension. And release, come back to stack, and then all the way up, and then extending the legs forward, forward fold. Now, why don't you come to the forward fold with the energy pointing toward the chin? Just turn your chin side to side, which in turn turns your head side to side. And the next time you go over to the right, lift the chin and point the chin toward your toes. And keep reaching. Now stay with that extension and let the chin toward the chest. Lift back up to neutral, come back to center, and then start to point the chin toward the left toes. Stay with the torso leaning forward, the energy leaning forward, and then chin toward the chest, stretching the back of the neck. Release that action, come back to center, inhale, lift back up, then bend the knees, swing the legs back behind you, down dog, and start to pedal out the legs, walk it out side to side. All right, come back to stillness in the down dog. Walk your feet out about mat swift distance. Walk your left hand toward the center line and walk your left hand into the middle, shortening your stance by one hand print and then threading the right hand to grab the left ankle and pull toward the left leg. Let the head release. Let the crown of the head get heavy. Start to release, so wherever your left hand is, you're gonna switch and put your right hand there so you're symmetrical. Left hand to grab the right ankle and then pull toward the right leg. As you pull toward the right leg, let the crown of the head release and let the back of the neck release. Release in action, walk it back to the distance of down dog. Walk your feet back to the distance of down dog. Then inhale, come forward into your plank. Lower all the way down to the belly. 
three progressive cobras. Inhale, lift up, baby cobra. Exhale, lower almost all the way down. Inhale, lift up a little bit higher. Exhale, lower almost all the way down. Inhale, lift up even higher. Full extension of your arms if you have it. Gently looking forward. And then again, turn the uh, chin toward the right shoulder, looking past the right shoulder. Rest the real ability. Come back to center, look to the other side, chin toward the left shoulder. Come back to center, bend the elbows, lower all the way down, child's pose. Seat toward the heels and fold. And then walking your hands in, standing on top of the shins, arms alongside. You're on the tops of the feet. On the inhale, as you extend the arms out, reach out and up, lift, gaze up. On the exhale, lower almost all the way down, so you're still hovering, so you're not all the way down. Inhale, lift up, reach up, looking up. Exhale, uh, neck to neutral, arms alongside as you lower down three times. Inhale, arms out, lift up, looking up. Exhale, come back to neutral with your spine, arms alongside, and lower almost all the way down. Two more. Inhale, lift, and look up. Exhale, down, and look forward. Inhale, lift, and look up. Exhale, all the way down and forward. Walking hands forward for down dog. Inhale, right heel up, three like a dog. Exhale, right knee in toward the nose, around the spine. Inhale, kick up, open up the hips and bend the right knee. Right knee outside of the right arm in touch. Kick back up. Knee comes into twist, touch the left arm. Inhale, kick it back up. Stepping your right foot forward. Warrior one. Now, warrior one with your thumbs to the occipital ridge. And again, pull up as you lean it back into a slight back bend. Elbows are out to the sides. Uh, upper back is activated as you pull up with your thumbs. Come back to neutral. Extend the arms up for warrior one. Exhale, open it up, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, side angle. You can take the right arm to the top of the right leg or the right hand to the floor, left arm up. Now for today, you're just going to look down toward the floor and the chin toward the right shoulder a little bit. So the left side of the neck gets a little bit more length. Inhale, come up, reverse warrior. Stretch on your right side, lengthen out the right leg, triangle. So again, you can modify with the right hand to the shin or to the floor directly if you can touch down, left arm reaching up. And again, once you have the pose, look down toward the floor and gently point the chin toward the right shoulder. So you're getting a little bit more stretch on the left side of the neck. But at the same time, right, because you're not looking upwards, the weight of the head is a little bit less, even though you're getting that left side stretch. Inhale, come all the way back up, reverse triangle. Bend the front knee, hands to the floor, right foot, stepping back, plank. Inhale, one breath, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left heel up. Exhale, left knee in toward the nose. Inhale, kick up, open up the hips, bend the left knee. Left knee outside of the left arm in touch. Kick back up. Knee comes into twist. Kick back up. Stepping your left foot forward. Warrior one. And as you come up again, thumbs to the occipital ridge. Lift, pull up. Lean the upper torso back for back bend. As you gently look up, elbows out to the side. Upper back is engaged. Come back to neutral. Raise the arms up for regular warrior one. Open it up. Warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, side angle, modifying. Elbow to the knee or the hand to the floor. Right arm reaching up. Once you get to side angle, look down toward the floor and gently chin toward the left shoulder. All right? So uh, by not looking up, the weight of the head is a little bit less. Also, by 
uh, pointing the chin toward the left shoulder. You're getting a little bit more stretch to the right side of the neck. Inhale, come back up, reverse warrior. Lengthen out the left leg, triangle. Hand to tap the shin to modify, hand to the floor if you can take it fully. Right arm reaching up. Once you have the pose, gaze to look down and chin gently toward the left shoulder. Inhale, all the way back up, reverse triangle. Bend the front knee, hands to the floor, left foot, stepping back plank. Inhale, one breath. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, right heel up. Right knee in toward the nose. Kick up, open up the hips, bend the right knee. Right knee outside of the right arm in touch. Kick back up. Knee comes into twist. Kick back up. Stepping right foot forward. Warrior one, arms up high and extend. Left hand, catching your right wrist. Extend up, side bending to your left. Take it back up. Switch hands, extend, side bending to the right. Back to center, hands to the waist. Draw the elbows back, broaden your chest, gently look up. On the exhale, round the spine, chin toward the chest, elbows forward and round the back. Two more times. Inhale, broaden, back bend, gently looking up, elbows back. Exhale, elbows forward, round the back, chin toward the chest. One more. Inhale, open, back bend, looking up. Exhale. Close, elbows forward, round the back, chin toward the chest. Inhale, come back up to warrior one. Exhale, open it up, warrior two. Reverse warrior. Exhale, half moon, right hand forward about a foot, loop off to right side, tip forward to balance. And for today especially, keep the gaze looking down to the floor, It'll make it easier for the weight of the head. Stay on the right leg, switch hands, revolved half moon, left hand down, square of your hips. Inhale, right arm up to twist. Begin to step it back, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor, right foot stepping back, plank. Inhale, one breath. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left heel up. Left knee in toward the nose. Kick up, open up the hips, bend the left knee. Left knee outside of the left arm in touch. Kick back up. Knee comes into twist. Kick back up. Stepping, your left foot forward, warrior one. Right hand, catching your left wrist, extend up and side bending to the right. Back to center, switch hands, extend, side bending to your left. Back to center, hands to the hips. Let's go forward first this time. Elbows forward, round the back, chin toward the chest. Inhale, open, expand, gently looking up with the back bend. Exhale, round it forward. Inhale, open up and look up. Exhale, round it forward. Inhale, open it up. Come back to neutral, arms up, warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Reverse, warrior. Half moon, left hand forward about a foot, lob off to left side. Keep the gaze looking down, right heel is reaching back, right arm is reaching up, and you're stacking your right side over your left, so you're rotating the torso and the hips to the right. Stay on this left leg, revolved half moon, right hand comes down, square off your hips to parallel the floor, then keep your right hand down, left arm up to twist.
begin to step it back. Warrior two, reverse warrior, hands to the floor, chaturanga, up dog, down dog. Inhale, right heel up, right knee in towards the nose, kick up, open up the hips, bend the right knee, right knee outside of the right arm in touch, kick it back up, knee comes into twist, kick it back up, stepping your right foot forward, warrior one, hands together in prayer, interlace, press your palms forward, Lengthen, reach up. Bend, press forward, and twist to the right. Square center, lengthen, reach up. Bend, press forward, and twist. Square center, lengthen, reach up. Bend, press forward, and twist. Square back to center. Wrap the hands back behind you, interlace. Lift up, gaze up. Bow forward, devotional warrior. Stay forward folding, release your hands to your floor, and then walk your hands diagonally out to the side, and then with your hands supporting, just let the head release and bow forward. And as you take that hip opening, inner left thigh stretch, you're also stretching your lower back and your arms as you fold forward, releasing the neck. Walk your hands back in a little bit. Keep your hands supporting. You're going to bend your left knee. Shift the weight back a little bit toward the left leg. You don't have to come all the way down. So you're just shifting forward and back a few times for hip opening. Then bend the front knee to lunge forward. Shift it back toward the left heel. Shift it forward, bending the front knee. One more time. Shift back. Then shift forward. Inhale, come up. Reverse warrior. Hands to the floor, right foot stepping back, plank. Inhale, one breath. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left heel up. Left knee in toward the nose. Kick up, open up the hips, bend the left knee. Left knee outside of the left arm in touch. Kick back up. Knee comes into twist, touch your right arm, kick back up. Stepping your left foot forward, warrior one. Hands together in prayer, interlace with the opposite thumb on top and press forward. Legs in front, leg reach up high, bend, press forward and twist left. Square center, length and reach up. Bend, press and twist. Square center, length and reach up. Bend, press forward, and twist. Square back to center. Wrap the hands back behind you. Opposite thumb on top. Lift up, gaze upwards. Then bow forward, devotional warrior. Crown of the head toward the inside of the foot. Stay in that forward fold and release your hands to the floor. Walk your hands forward, diagonally out, and with your hands supporting, just let the head release. So it's a strengthening of the left leg, opening of the glutes, extension of the inner right thigh as you forward fold, stretching lower back in your arms, relaxing the back of the neck. All right, walk your hands in just a little bit for support. You're going to shift back by bending your right knee, drawing your seat toward the right heel. You don't have to come all the way down. And then bend the front knee and shift it back forward, back and forth two more times. Shift it back toward the right heel. Shift it forward toward the left. Shift back to the right heel. Shift back forward into your left leg. And then on the inhale, come all the way back up. Reverse warrior. And then hands to the floor. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Inhale, right heel up. Stepping your right foot forward, crescent moon. Left knee comes down. 
Take extra padding as you need and lunge forward. And then for today, let's take the hands to the hips again. Your thumbs are pressing against your lower back or your um, um, the, the bone that's right here, the hip bones, right? Draw the elbows back, broaden your chest and gently looking up. And as you release the action a little bit, reach your arms forward. Left hand to your right shoulder, right hand to your left, um, right hand to your left shoulder, and then as you draw the elbows toward the ribs, round the mid and upper back, chin toward the chest, and expand. So keep the hips lunging forward. You're still going to hip opening, left quad stretch, but now you're also opening the upper back and relaxing the back of the neck. Release that action, take the hands to the floor, shift back into a half split, tuck the left toes under, and shift the hips over your left knee, flex your right foot. As you step it back down to the floor, turn the right toes out, right thigh turns out as well, left hand grounds to the floor, reach your right arm up over the right ear toward the left side. Then raise your right arm up and behind you for the half bind and gently looking up if you want or look down to be a little bit easier for your neck. Then release your right hand back down to the floor. Walk it forward for lizard. Forearms down. And lift the elbows back up, walk your hands back in. Turn the right toes back forward. Frame your right foot, low lunge, tuck your left toes under, lift the left knee. Once you stabilize here, come up to high lunge, arms up high. Once you're steady, on the inhale, lengthen front leg, reach up higher. Bend the front knee, arms long side. Lengthen and reach up three times. Bend the front knee, arms along side. Length and reach up. Keep the arms reaching. Bend the front knee, hands together in prayer. And twisting to the right. Hook the left arm to out right knee and twist. Inhale, all the way back up and around. Reverse, warrior. Hands to the floor, right foot. Stepping back, plank. And lower all the way down to the belly. Take the left arm down and roll to the outer left hip, outer left leg. So check out your left shoulder lines up over your elbow. You want a vertical arm, upper arm, and that will give you a support structure. Right hand can come to the floor for support. Lift up the right foot. Flex your right foot. Then move your right heel forward and hold it there for three, two, one. Move the right heel back as far back as you can. Fully extend it for flexing for three, two, one. Bend your right knee. Move your right knee forward and hold it. Three, two, one. Move the right heel back. Stay there. Three, two, one. One, and then grab the right foot with your right hand and then kick back even more. So use that tension. Draw the knee back in and you're going to rotate the knee up toward the sky and then pull the right knee in. You can take yogic toe lock as well and extend the right leg up toward the sky. If you have even better flexibility, it could be hand to heel.
and then start to release your right leg. Square back to center. Switch sides. Right forearm down. Roll to outer right leg. Left hand to support. Flex your left foot. Pick up the left leg. Then move your left heel forward, as far forward as you can, and hold it. Five, four, three, two, one. Move it back behind you. Keep the leg extended, flexing your foot for five, four, three, two, one. Bend your left knee, draw it forward, and hold it there. Five, four, three, two, one. Draw it back and hold it there. Five, four, three, two, one. And grab the foot with your left hand and kick back with tension behind you first. Yeah. Then start to release. Draw that knee forward and rotate your knee up toward the sky. Either grab the knee with the left hand, yogic toe lock, or hand to heel and extend up. Release, take it back to center. Reach your fingertips back, reach your toes back, look down toward the floor. On the inhale, lift the head, lift the upper back, lift your feet, lift your thighs, reach your fingertips back. So crown of the head reaching forward, gazes to the floor. Fingertips are, and toes are reaching back in space. Five, four, three, two, one, release, hands alongside the rib cage, tuck your toes, press back up into a plank, and then down dog. Left leg up, stepping, your left foot forward, crescent moon, right knee comes down, extra padding as you need. Once you set up the base of the pose, Hands to the hips again. Your thumbs are pressing against the bone to your lower back. Broaden your chest. Gaze up. Then come back to neutral. Extend the arms forward. Right hand to left shoulder, left arm underneath. Walk your hands toward the center line and then point the elbows toward the ribs as you uh, round the upper back, chin toward the chest. So hips are still actively leaning forward for the quad stretch, hip opener. Upper back is rounded and you're broadening the upper back and relaxing the back of the neck. And gently release your hands to your floor. Turn your left toes out at an angle. Left thigh also turns out. Right hand to the floor. Raise your left arm up and over left ear. Side stretch first. Then reach your left arm up and behind you for the half bind and twist. You can look up or you can look down. Your choice. Then begin to release your hands to your floor in front of you. Lizard, walk your hands forward about a foot or so and forearms down. Alrighty, let's break. So lift the elbows back up, walk your hands back in. Turn the left toe, toes forward, frame your foot. Coming to low lunge, tuck the right toes under, lift the right knee and stabilize here. Once you have your low lunge, rise up for high lunge and stabilize there. Then on the inhale, lengthen front leg, reach up high. Bend the front knee, arms alongside. 
lengthen and reach up. Bend arms alongside. Lengthen and reach up. Keep the arms reaching. Bend the front knee. Twisted lunge. Hands together in prayer. Twist your left. You're hooking your right arm to outer left knee and twisting. I just note that if you're shaky here, keep the gaze to the floor and that helps tremendously with balance. On the inhale, come all the way up and around, reverse warrior, and then hands to the floor, left foot, stepping back plank, in a one breath, exhale, lower all the way down to your belly. This time, you're going to shift to the right and take frog leg on the left leg. So the left hip and the left knee, horizontals to the front of the mat, left knee, left heel, vertical to the side of the mat, flexing your left foot. And then you're going to come back to this uh, shape of sphinx. So your forearms are down parallel to each other, shoulder swift. And think about the left hip and left shoulder drawing downwards, right? Because your left leg is off to the side in a frog leg, you're going to feel like you're lifting up a little bit. So I want you to energetically try to press your left side down more actively so that you can really get into the hip. Now, as we take the next few breaths, if you can find that subtlety of just allowing the lower back to just quiet and release and be as, le as little activity as possible to your lower back. But at the same time, energetically, your inner left thigh, inner left hip, working toward the floor. It's just a shifting of energy. Less on the lower back, more on the inner left knee, inner left hip. All right, let's begin to break. You're going to shift the weight to the right a little bit so that you can uh, reach your left leg back. Once you have that, shift to your left leg. Draw the right knee up. So the right knee and the right hip lines up horizontal to the front of the mat, right knee, right heel, vertical to the side of the mat, flex your right foot. Then your torso, your arms are in sphinx pose. And once you measure all that out, really think about the right side, right shoulder, right elbow, right hip, right knee, pressing toward the floor energetically. Now, once you find that energy, can you think about keeping all the activity on the right side, but releasing your lower back and just as little work to your lower back as possible as you continue to settle and sink into your right side. All right, let's reactivate. Shift to your left side so that you can reach your right leg back. And as slow and as gentle as you can, lifting the elbows, lowering your chest, and then making your way back to child's pose. Nice and easy, nice and slow. And lift back up. Let's gently take Gomukhasana legs. So walk your knees in toward each other. And walk the left knee in toward the center line. And then you're going to cross the right leg over, lining up the knees. Now, you don't have to walk your feet that wide. In fact, if you want to keep it a little bit narrower, maybe you can even gently find a way to sit down on that seat. Right, so traditionally, you try to spread the heels out as wide as you can as you continue to line up the knees and sit all the way down, right? That might be a little bit rough, but for some of us, if you can do that easily, you can take it. 
Okay, looks good for you guys. <laughs> I guess I'm talking about myself then. <laughs> so for me, I don't take it super wide. I take it a little bit narrower. It's a little bit easier. And then if I have a block, I'll take a block as well because my hips are really tight and going this direction. All right, so just support with your hands. Sit up tall and try to ground both seats as evenly as you can. All right, so uh, in frog legs, you're taking uh, adduction, right, going away from center, adduction, and you're working the inner thighs. Now you're going for um, abduction. You're going toward the center line in this cross-legged position. Three more breaths. All right, as we start to come out of the pose, start to lean back forward, and then we'll start to switch sides. So first, undo the legs. You might want to move your hips side to side a little bit. So that was interesting, trying to quiet the mind as we have Muse wailing on the guitars, right? It was like perfect timing when we try to like quiet down. But you know what? That is an exercise in like duality, right? <laughs> All right, this time, right knee is to center. Wrap the left leg over. Line up the knees, right? If you're able to widen out the feet a little bit, you can. If you need to keep it a little bit narrower, you can do that too. And of course, if you have blocks at home, you can use blocks and then make your way back to a seated position. All right, Goma Kassan has always been difficult for me, but it looks pretty easy for you guys. Congratulations, supporting with your hands, sitting up tall, do the best you can. Three more breaths. All righty, starting to draw your breath back in and then lean back forward, undo the legs, and this time we'll take Virasana. All right, the inner thighs together, knees together, heels apart. And then if you can sit all the way down in between the heels, do that. If you cannot, you can sit up on a block or if it's easier for you to just take kneeling position and sitting on the heels, you can do that. So it all depends on your mobility, your physicality. Right. So for me, I'm not touching all the way down, but I can hover comfortably. 
So I'll hover with my hand supporting, and then again, we'll take a few more breaths here. <laughs> yeah, all these poses are difficult for me. Because one, I have thick thighs and thick calves, right? So just the flesh pressing against each other is already an obstacle. And then I also have pretty tight knees, and uh, I think. So it's always been a very difficult pose for me without blocks. Three more breaths. All right, let's start to ease your way out. So leaning the torso forward, walk your hands forward nice and slow. With your hands supporting, tuck the toes under and then gently coming into a squatting position. And that should be a pretty nice release. All right? Ease out this um, in the next few breaths. When you're ready, making your way to down dog. All right, start to walk the feet forward towards your hands and gently take the seat down. Left leg extended, grab hold of the right foot and extend the right leg fully if you can, bending the knees if you need or grabbing the back of the right leg. Any of those options. Now, if you tend to round the spine a lot, I want you to think about lifting your chest leaning the head back slightly, and always think about neutral spine when you're taking this crunch off center. All right. And then bending your right knee, leg cradle, arms underneath your right shin, and hugging your knee, knee in, or your shins in. All right, so think of this pose almost like a sitting pigeon, right? So this part of your pose is in pigeon. All right, starting to release. Extend the right leg, contrast in a second side. Extend the left leg fully. Bend the left knee instead, or grab the back of the left leg. Any of those are good options for binding. Then lift the chest, lean the head slightly back, coming back to a no more neutral position with your spine. And bend your left knee, leg cradle, arms underneath the left shin. So you're trying to draw the left shin parallel to the floor and closer in toward the chest. Now, for those of us where this leg cradle is so drawn in, it's very difficult. You can always keep the left heel reaching forward a little bit, right? And supporting the left heel from, under, from the underside of your foot, right? Or the outside of the foot, outer ankle. So this way, it's easier for you to access the pose and it's not so intense on the hips. If you have the range, you're hugging your shin in. All righty, starting to release, extend the left leg out. And then with both hands supporting, lowering onto your back, and let's take bridge, bend your knees, step the feet in about hips width with your fingertips, feel for the back of the heels. Once you're set up, press your heels down, lift the seat, arms can stay alongside the hips, or if you wanna interlace your hands underneath you and walk your shoulders in, Feel free to do that. Either way, it is a back bend here, supporting with your uh, feet and your upper back. All right, if you want more intensity, you can always think about the hip bones lifting up even higher, very actively pressing down and lifting up through the hip bones.
and start to release your hands and lower all the way down and hug both knees in. And just like we did in leg cradle, we're gonna do this in the reclining position. So left leg all the way out to the floor. You're gonna thread the arm either underneath your right shin by lifting the upper back and throwing the arms underneath, just like you were in that seated position. And then you're gonna get heavy with your upper back and the back of the head and pull that leg in with you as you draw down toward the floor. Now, if you're not able to do that, right? You can keep your upper back lifted. Just really hug your shin in toward the chest and holding with your arms. Right, in this reclining um, position of the pigeon, this is um, recommended for those of us with knee issues. So when you're in a regular pigeon, right, and you're putting pressure on your leg, facing down, this could be quite stressful for your knees, right? So if that is the case, you might want to flip your pigeon upside down in this position. And so then this way you can get your hip opening without stressing out the knees. All right, starting to release. Right leg comes down, left knee draws in, and then threading the arms underneath your left shin for your leg cradle in an upside down position. All right, so this is your upside down pigeon. And so same thing as in the seated position. If hugging your shin in parallel to the floor and toward the chest is too much, you can always angle out the heel away from you a little bit, right? The shin can be at an angle. It does not have to be horizontal to the floor and toward the chest if that's too much. All right, beginning to release. Let's take your recline twist. Left leg goes out, right knee comes in. Right arm out to a T and twist to your left. Take it back to center, switch legs, switch arms, and twist to the other direction. Back to center again, hugging both knees in. And once you're back to your left and right symmetry and you're ready, step the feet to the floor, slide the legs forward. Shavasana, final relaxation. Toes are gently turning out, arms alongside the body. Palms face up, eyes are closed, and let everything go.
beginning to draw your breath back in, moving your fingers and your toes. And when you're ready, reach the arms overhead, stretching in opposite direction. And then rolling over to the right side and come up to a comfortable cross leg position. Let's take a non-dominant shin on top. And then reconnecting to an even seat, a lengthy spine, shoulders broad, breath deep, and let the neck be free. Inhale for own. Um. Hands together in prayer, bowing forward, sealing in practice. You know, come up. Namaste. Thank you so much for being here today. And thank you for sharing your practice with me. My name is Stephen Chang, coming to you live from 333 Grand in downtown Jersey City, New Jersey. Please visit my website, simhalyoga.com, for the hybrid schedule, which is in person here at 333 Grand, as well as through Zoom. You can register for class through yubindi.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, classes are $10, and you can pay through Venmo or PayPal. Payment information on the bottom of the video, as well as my website, simhalyoga.com. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.